This is WSMV4 News Today. Massive damage this morning after a deadly tornado outbreak strikes Tennessee. Six people lost their lives, including two children. This morning, several cities in the midstate are dealing with the aftermath from Clarksville to Nashville, Hendersonville and Gallatin. Thousands of homes are without power in Davidson County. A tornado also ripped through the Madison area and that was caught on camera. So let's take a look. You can see in that video thick funnel cloud. It was churning across with flashes of lightning coming through and the video. There it is right now. You can see that lightning that I just mentioned earlier. This was also taken from the Madison area. So the group that recorded this video, they went back inside after seeing that big ball of fire there. As we mentioned a little earlier, we know three people were killed in Madison, and that includes a two-year-old little boy. Metro Police just identified all three. That's right. WSMB4's Danielle Jackson is live where this happened on Nesbitt Road right now. Danielle, we know the name of those three victims. Can I follow you, Jake? Yeah. That's right, and as daybreak, we've seen so many people come back out to the Nesbitt Lane area. Just take a look behind me. Uh, there's damage to home after home after home. So many trees uprooted, trees into homes, power lines down. I mean, you can just see the extent of the damage, and people are coming out here to assess the situation, get retrieve things out of their homes as well. Now, we have also seen people just come inside of their homes and get things out and ask other other people if they need help with anything but I want to take you to this video we shot yesterday evening of that damage you can see trees are down power lines are down and I talked with a guy who lived on this road he says he wasn't at home at the time but his family was and they were able to get out safely I heard an explosion and you couldn't see nothing there wasn't nothing you couldn't see literally zero visibility we had a tree come through the house and this the, um, the roof caved in in the back, but that's about it. Now we've seen Nashville OEM officials out here as well as NES. As you can imagine, several people are without power. Of course, we're going to stay out here and assess the situation. But now I want to go to uh, Carly Gordon, who's in Clarksville. Carly, can you tell us about the extent of the damage there? Yeah, well, earlier this morning, we showed you this mangled piece of playground equipment. And at that point, we said, who knows where it came from? Well, at this point, we do think we know. I want to show you way, way over there. If you see that pop of yellow and blue, that is what's left of a child's playground. So this kind of gives you the extent of the damage, an idea of it anyway. And we are seeing people who are starting to come out to look around. We're seeing them shaking their heads. They just cannot believe what they are seeing. And many of those people consider themselves lucky because they are the ones who survive. Sadly, we know that is not the case for everyone. 23 people here in Clarksville were hurt and had to go to the hospital. Three people, as you mentioned, died and one of them was a child. Now the mayor here has declared a state of an emergency and 13,000 customers are still without power overnight people were being told to stay inside and to stay off the roads but seconds after the storm passed people came rushing out of their homes and they talked to us about what they saw what they heard clearly it was traumatizing my husband um, said people were running around making sure everybody was out and my husband had to go over there and help um, pick up some uh, would to get a little girl and a little boy out. Um, I know oh. one of them was unresponsive. And now that people are getting out, we are starting to hear more and more stories just like the one that you just heard. I just spoke to a woman who says that her grandbabies were hunkered down with their dad inside a bathroom. And she said as soon as she was able to get out this morning, she rushed over there so that she could lay eyes on them and hug their necks. Clearly, these people here have been through a lot and they have a long road of recovery ahead. For now, reporting live in Clarksville, I'm Carly Gordon, WSMB4. Yeah, we know.
know there's going to be a lot of uniting, a lot of volunteering, and so many people just trying to help others. That's what we do yes. right here in Tennessee. Our team of meteorologists have been on top of it all, tracking that massive system all day, all night. Now we're going to go to First Alert Meteorologist Melanie Layton to get a better track of where those tornadoes actually hit and travel. And that's right. And Melanie, you talked to the National Weather Service this morning. They're going to send out a team. When do we expect to have an update? So hopefully sometime this early afternoon. I talked to them this morning. I gave them a call and said, hey, are you surveying You know which areas? They weren't sure exactly where they were going to go first, but they had two big crews heading out the door right as the sun was coming up. They're going to go survey all the damage. They're going to look for all the damage that they're seeing with their eyes, but also on our radar, we can actually go back and look at what those radar indicated wind speeds were, how fast that rotation was moving. And I can tell you what, on our end, what I was seeing in real time yesterday, especially up this way, closer into Montgomery County, where we unfortunately had some fatalities there, about 130 miles or greater wind speeds there. So that's talking about ES3 ish category. Now we'll know for sure a little bit later once they're finished surveying, but it could also take a few days to survey all the damage because even where we didn't see just tornado damage, we had a lot of wind, hail damage, a lot of heavy rain that came down yesterday. There are many spots across the mid state reeling from the damage. You know, we have some areas that got hit super hard. We have unfortunately loss of life, but there are some areas here like back in Dixon and Cheatham County where there's a lot of structural damage and a couple weeks before Christmas, people are without a home right now. So a lot of things to look out for. One thing I can tell you though is that we're tracking at least three, two of them we know of for sure, maybe three to four supercell tracks. And what that means is this, this particular tornado started over here in Stewart's County, went over into Montgomery and then across the state line into Kentucky, into Todd and Logan County. This thing spanned four counties. One thing that's still kind of a mystery to us right now is was this one single tornado on the ground the whole time or did this kind of pulsate? Did it touch down then go back up and touch down again? That is very likely in storms like this, especially when you get into these warm atmospheres. This one, though, I can tell you when we were tracking it, though, yesterday afternoon, it was sometime around 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, we were seeing heavy rotation that did not let up. So there's a good chance this one could have spanned all the way into southern Kentucky on the ground the entire time and we've seen that before it happened in March of 2020 with tornadoes across the mid state too. I mentioned Dixon into Cheatham County. We had some some uh, tornadoes possibly confirmed out that way as well. Looks like a lot of tornado damage to me. Some of this could be straight line wind as well. Springfield had a good hit there too. That could also be part of this one that hit Dixon and Cheatham County and then this was a pretty long one as well. Northern Davidson County. That's where we had those fatalities out in Madison. It went into Hendersonville and Sumner County and then continue. So that could have been one long track tornado as well. We won't know until later this afternoon. And of course, as soon as we know something, we will let you know as well. Good news this morning is all is quiet. We still have a few showers making their way out of here for our far eastern counties. It's now cleared out of places like Cookville, McMinnville, Manchester. You are drying out. Crossville, Jamestown, you still have some showers there over I-40. But the storms are gone. The cold front has come through, and that cold front is really bringing in some cold air for us. We've got temperatures this morning already starting off in the 30s in many spots. We're at 37 in Hopkinsville and Clarksville, 30 38 in Dixon, 37 Springfield. Some of the hardest hit areas are waking up to temperatures very cold this morning, so it's going to make way for some very cold uh, cleanup outside this afternoon. 40 here in Nashville and Franklin, 41 in Murfreesboro, Lawrenceburg, and Tullahoma. As we go throughout the day today, our high temperature only reaching about 44 degrees in Nashville. It's going to be a pretty chilly day for us. We will see plenty of sunshine, but that wind coming in, it's going to be biting. It's coming in around 10 to 15 miles miles an hour. That's going to make our temperatures feel a few degrees colder than they actually are. We'll go into more detail about the cool temperatures, how long they're going to last, and when our next chance of rain is coming. That's all ahead with your seven day forecast a little bit later in the show. We know you've got us covered. All right, Melanie, of course, it is vital, folks, as you're seeing, to make sure you have more than one way to receive those weather alerts during severe weather like what we just had. So you can start with our first alert weather app. It's free and it's easy to use. And tens of thousands of people are waking up in the dark this morning from Saturday storms. According to NES Power Map, right now, more than 27,000 people are without power in Nashville. Clarksville, they're seeing over 13,000 and a little over 100 customers in Sumner County are in the dark.
All right, so much storm damage. We know lots of you, many people, maybe your loved ones need help. So we do want to remind you of the Red Cross shelters that are available to those who need them right now in Montgomery, in Davidson, and in Sumner counties. So we've got the locations for you. We're going to put them on the screen. We know in Clarksville, a shelter is set up right now. This is at Northeast High School. Then in Hendersonville, Beach High School right there on Long Hollow Pike. So that's Sumner County. And then here in Nashville, for Davidson County, it's at Isaac Litton Middle School. It's being used for shelter this morning. All right, we have just learned that a nonprofit full of Christmas gifts there in Sumner County hit by storm. A little bit more of a miracle there going on. The help they need and how you can pitch in. That's next. Stick around. Good Sunday morning, everybody. All right, we have more storm team coverage for you right now. So we just got some new clips of video. This is coming to us from Springfield now. Take a look at this. This is the Valvoline oil change building right there. Half of it, it's just gone. Wow. So again, that's new coming in. Here's another look at what people are dealing with out of Springfield there. You can see in this neighborhood, massive tree uprooted there from the 